Hey everybody, and welcome to another JASP tutorial. We're continuing our reliability kick, my, our reliability module. Uh, and in this one, we're gonna finish it out by talking about the Bland-Altman plots uh, that you would do if you have judges and their ratings. So this works with um, data sets that you have done intra-class correlations, uh, trying to get those values based on um, you know, uh, inter-rater reliability. And then we have the rater agreement, which is the actual rater agreement module that tells you inter-rater reliability using three different uh, estimation methods. And the Bland-Altman plot really just gives you a visualization of these intra-class correlations. How well or how much do your raters agree with one another and putting those point, uh, putting those values on a plot. And we've got some shading that we can use using our confidence intervals to really show um, how well or how poorly uh, judges or raters or tests um, uh, correlate with one another or um, agree with one another. Uh, so we'll jump into that uh, in just a second. We are using JASP uh, 0.16.4, Intel version of that, of course. Uh, this is the current version at time of recording. So there we go. Uh, now we are using, in this particular set of uh, videos, we are using a data set that I made um, where we've got three judges and they rated 10 contestants on a scale from 0 to 10. And we're seeing how well they correlate with one another. I just randomly picked numbers that were sort of toward the higher end of the spectrum of scores. And so if you want to follow along, you can pause here and uh, leave uh, and, and put this data set in your own. You can follow along with me if you'd like. So I'm also going to open the data here because I have to, right? <laughs> so we're going to open, we're going to go to recent files because I have been doing back-to-back -back recording. Of course, of course I have. So here's the data again. You can pause it. If you want to put this into your own CSV file to upload into JASP, remember JASP does not have a its own uh, spreadsheet editing functionality. You can find that in Jamovi though, but you cannot find these modules in Jamovi. As far as I'm aware, I'll have to take a look. Now, so we've got the three judges and we've got their 10 contestants. So we've got, you know, uh, 10 ratings for each judge and total, so a total of 30 ratings. And uh, we're going to make some Bland-Altman plots, plots. Now, the Bland-Altman plot used to be uh, in uh, as part of the interclass correlation uh, module, or I should say function within the reliability module. How you add the reliability modules, you go to this plus sign and you click on reliability right here. And it will show up in your top bar here and you can open it up. And so, as I said, Bland-Altman plots have been um, separated out. They used to be within the interclass correlation function. Now you can just do them on your own if you'd like. So maybe a, a way that uh, the JASP devs decided to uh, separate them out. Now, if you go into the Bland-Altman plot and you click on the um, info for this, there's nothing. It's empty. All of the information is contained within the help file for the interclass correlation um, module or, or function here. So be aware of that. Now, one thing to note, in, in my previous videos, I was able to put uh, all of the judges into the data um, and uh, the analysis, the variable table here all at once. I can't do that because these are measurement pairs. These are measurement pairs. So you have to put the pairs together. So we have three judges, okay? And so we're going to do uh, three pairs, right? So judge one and judge two are going to be put over as a pair. Judge one and judge three are going to be put over as a pair. It's already going to generate the plots. I'll get to those in just a minute. And then the judge two and the judge three um, is my last player, pair, and we put them over. So we've got one to two, one to three, two to three. And if you saw my uh, inter-rater or rater agreement video a few videos ago, uh, you would have seen that these judges don't agree on much. Um, judge one to three have better agreement than judge um, judges one to two and judges two to three. So just be aware of that. Now, uh, before I click any of these other ones, because they add some additional information for you, I want to talk about the basic information that you find in this plot. So let's take the judge one to judge two plot. OK, um, and so what you have here are the average measurements between the two. OK, so an average between a five and a six, uh, five and uh, a, or six and a seven, excuse me, would be a six point five. So these are represent one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So maybe Two of them are overlapping. I'm not sure, but there are eight measurements here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I guess it's because we are averaging. That's why there are only eight dots here. In any case, uh, or there is overlap. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, there's just there's just eight. Okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> the x-axis represents the means of the two measurements, right? The y-axis represents the differences between the two measurements, right? So uh, a average of five is a difference of two for this particular one. That's why there are eight, because there's a different score going on right here. Um, and we have three dashed lines. Uh, these dashed lines represent the mean difference between the two variables, so judge one and judge two, and it's upper and lower difference. So mean difference between the two variables are right here, the center line, and then the difference, or the upper and lower bounds, excuse me, are these two other dashed lines. So the upper bound and then the lower bound, of course. Okay. Limits are based on the critical difference, which is calculated, by multiplying the standard deviation with 1.96, a value you might be familiar with if you are a fan of z-scores. Okay, so standard deviation of these values multiplied by 1.96, okay? So those are what each of these look like, and um, the y-axes are going to be dependent on 
see if we can edit this. Oh, we can. Oh, we can. It's so lovely. Oh, I love it. So we can we can change our to make them look exactly the same. The x-axis and the y-axis. We can we can make them look the exact same. I'm not gonna do that in this video. I do have a video on the um, graph, uh, the graph uh, editing mod uh, functionality in Jasp uh, on my video. So take a check, uh, take a check, take a check, take a look at that uh, when you have the time. So you can modify these if you want, and make them look exactly the same, which is nice, right? Because we actually have three different y-axes going on here. We've got negative four to four. We've got negative four to four, but with a difference of two as opposed to ones. And then we've got negative three to three. So four is not even represented on this graph. Um, and then differences of five to 8.5, five to eight and six to 8.5 because of the differences. So yeah, take a look into that. Take a look into that. Um, so you can see how much these raters um, agree with one another by looking at this. So all of these ratings are pretty, uh, so between five and 8.5. So there's a lot of variability in the mean of the measurements between these two judges where there is less here, but there is a dot on the outside of the upper bound of the mean difference. Whereas this one here is um, a little bit tighter. A lot of the data is um, contained over here, but there is this one little guy on the edge here between two and three. A little bit of added functionality that you can add here is the confidence intervals. You can change the confidence intervals if you'd like. It adds in smaller dashed lines, which makes this these graphs a little bit busy, a little bit busy, but we can spruce it up by adding some shading. Uh, shading now um, makes this unusable, but if you use color, it might work a little bit better because we end up having different shades for within the uh, confidence intervals and um, and outside the bounds, right? So how many values are contained within the purple section in each of these is, is kind of what you're looking for here on the difference of measurements. I would suggest always using color and they've uh, could use a better scheme. Green here, not great, although it depends on the contrast here between purple or this uh, lavender and this uh, pastel orange. Um, but you know, uh, red, green, colorblind, and there's not another red on here, so maybe this works fine. I don't know, but perhaps they could use a little bit better. Um, uh, color scheme here that's that's at least my my and a little uh a little bit better there uh, a little bit more accessible jasp devs and then finally you can get the bland altman table which gives you the values in each of these uh graphs these plots and it um it tells you here right so the mean difference plus 1.96 standard deviation and the mean difference minus 1.96 standard deviation good times here tells you what each of those values are what the dashed lines represent on our y-axis okay and then the confidence intervals again are getting dashed for each of those right so we've got a lower and upper bound for each of these values okay so the idea here is that for agreement to be good you want to see the dots more of the dots, more of the dots of the scatter plot within this purple section here. That's the idea. And in our in the previous video where I showed um, the uh, rater or the interrater reliability analysis, judge one to three had the best. And you can see here that we have one, two, three, four, five, six out of the eight corresponding um, comparisons within the purple zone, within the violet lavender zone, whatever it is, within this uh, zone around zero. That shows you um, that judge one and three agreed on their values quite a bit, right? So a five and a six, a six and a seven, a seven and a seven, an eight and an eight, a four and a six, ooh, a nine and a five. That's really where the, the judge three did not think this person did really great. Um, six and a six, a seven and a six, a seven and a seven, right? So that, that's, that tells you how um, judge one to three really compares here, right? And so there's your uh, nine and five right there, that four, oof, rough, right? With an average of seven. So you can see here, there's only four. So only half are in the purple zone, and then one, two, three, four, again, on only half between judge one and two. So those are bland Ullman plots in JASP. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or feedback, please leave them down below. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.